Should you be printing your mixes or should you be bouncing them? What's the difference? <laughs> Let's talk about it. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. And this channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. Now, people always asking me, yo, Wavy, how do I print a mix? What is printing a mix? What is bouncing a mix, man? Let's just talk about this whole thing and I'll show you how to both bounce your mix and how to print your mix in Pro Tools. So let's just first, you know, talk about the whole big picture here. Bouncing and printing ultimately will end up with a with the same result. The thing is, once you get done recording and mixing, adding effects and doing automation inside of your session, in, inside your DAW, you want to export that down into a stereo file or a multi-channel file that can be used by people to listen to so that they don't have to have all of these individual elements. They just want that one track, that one stereo file that they can place or upload on their website or put into their MP3 player and jam out. Now, Ultimately, using a Pro Tools session, we need to figure out a way to print this out. The same way you would type a paper in Microsoft Word and then go up and hit print to put it on something that is fixed and tangible that you can give somebody that they can't change any longer. Ultimately, that's what printing is. It's going to be exporting your mix down um, and putting it in a format that can be used um, you know, to enjoy the mix, to enjoy the music that you just created. It's the exporting, it's the rendering, it's the final step in mixing, okay? So ultimately, we have two different ways to export our mixes. We can bounce them or we can print in Pro Tools. I'm gonna show y'all how to actually do both. So let's go first with bouncing, okay? So after I get done mixing and I got my whole session ready, typically uh, what I would do is, is set some markers. So I would set like a marker here for the end of the session. And then I would just make a selection that goes from the beginning to the end so that my entire mix is selected. As long as I have a timeline selection in Pro Tools, anything that's included within my timeline selection and it's audible, it will be printed down. So if I wanted to just uh, bounce or print, print down, bounce a small section, I could just make a small selection on my timeline and only that portion will be printed down. But in this case, let's just imagine that we're gonna do the whole song. We're gonna bounce this whole song. Once I have everything sounding exactly how I like it and I can hear all the elements that I wanna hear in my final product, I make that selection, go up to file and choose bounce mix. Once you're in the bounce mix folder, you can name the file that you're gonna get. So bounce mix, maybe if I'm just doing a, a rough mix, I could be, a, yo, this is my rough, and I put that on there. You choose a file type. Now, typically, I'm gonna go with a WAV file, but if you're just gonna go with an MP3, you can do that as well. But I'm just gonna stick with WAV, all right? It's gonna be a nice, high-quality file. Now, when it comes to the mix source, whichever outputs that I've been monitoring through the whole time, those are the physical outputs that I want to actually use as my mix sources, the physical outputs that I've been monitoring through. And I'm gonna keep it on right now, the physical A monitor left and right. So whatever I'm hearing is what's gonna be printed. Next, uh, we're going to come down and choose the file format. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Most of the time, I'll, I'll see a lot of people make mistakes here, and they'll go with a multi-mono. Multi-mono is ultimately going to give you two separate files, one file for the left channel and one file for the right channel. We don't want that in the case of printing a stereo mix or bouncing first, right? So I'm going to go with interleave. This is going to give me one file with both the left and right channel information. Now, depending on where where you are going to ultimately end up uh, sending this mix or uploading it, that's gonna determine what the bit depth and sample rate is. If you record it at 2448 and you're gonna be using a WAV file, I would just keep it just like that, all right? If you're going down to a CD or something like that, then you're gonna want to choose the bit depth to be 16 bit and the sample rate at 44.1. Next, we come down to the location, which is also super important. We have to choose a place, a destination where we want to save the file. So um, when I go down to bounce my mix, I'm going to choose the session folder and then the bounce files 
folder um, that is created with when I created this session, then the bounced file will be in there. Again, this is going to be the printed file that that has all of the effects. It has all of my um, all everything that I've done, all my automation, all the changes I've made to that mix will be included in this new stereo file. And then I can upload it to, you know, uh, distro kid or whatever, you know. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit that session folder, and then we got one more. Or if you if you want to save it somewhere else, you could just choose, you know, come down and hit prompt for location, and then they'll ask you where you want to save it. Or you can just choose right now where you want to save this file after you bounce it. But I'm just going to save it directly to the session folder because that makes the most sense to me. I like to stay organized in that way. Now, if you do, if you have this little button check that allows you to do an offline bounce, basically you won't hear this bounce. It won't happen in real time. It'll just render offline and then save that file. Now this happens to be a little bit faster, but I don't necessarily recommend you use this too often. Um, listen to the mix one more time just by taking it off unchecking this offline and yes it might take you an extra two or three minutes to listen through the whole bounce but just taking that extra time will ensure that the final product is what you want it to be right you're hearing the final product as it's rendering down but if you're in a hurry or you're working with something that's a little bit longer format like a podcast or something like that then you can hit this offline and it'll render this file a whole lot faster so i'll just hit offline right now so we can uh, get this over with boom it just bounced it down and then my whole mix here including any effects anything that i was able to hear will be saved so if i go over to my documents folder i got my gain staging and then in my bounce files folder i have a stereo wave file that in that this is basically the song this is the music this is what i want to upload to my distro kid or my soundcloud or that i want to send out and so that you know y'all can rap over my youtube beats whatever it is that's how you would do that step now let's go to another step and let's talk about printing now printing later that same evening is a little bit different of a concept but again you're going to end up with the same output you're going to end up with the same product at the end the same file you're going to end up with a file at the end now the difference on when i would print versus when i would bounce includes a few different things right so one is if I'm actually working on a long project, right? Something that is super long, I would choose printing over bouncing. That way, because when I'm printing, if there's a mistake halfway through this long project or whatever it is that I'm working on, long song or podcast, if there's a mistake halfway through, I don't have to reprint the whole thing. I can just stop it and pick back up at that point after I make whatever uh, correction I need to make. I can stop and and, and keep on going and recording over that that same point and then just kind of consolidate those files together so that's one reason i might choose printing also if i'm using any hardware during my mix if i'm uh using my my bus compressor or if i'm using my summon mixer or i have like some uh um, hardware reverb or anything that i'm using um in my session i would choose to print versus bouncing that way i'm running the gear running my signal through the gear the same way i've been listening through it to it the whole time and just recording that signal back into my pro 2 session all right um that's a couple of reasons why and then there's also some people who just say bouncing changes the sound i don't i don't really subscribe to that method but i think that printing has some uh merit and it's just another alternative for you to baby maybe even be able to make some changes on the fly while you are rendering down your final project so let's take a look at um printing so printing basically will work something like this right if i'm going to print i'm going to start first start off by making a new stereo audio track so i'm going to make a new stereo audio track and let's call it print when i make this new track i'm gonna bring it right up here what I want to do now is assign a bus to this track. So I'm just going to go to bus and then let's just say bus 11 and 12. I'll right click to rename this and let's name it the print bus. Okay. Now, ultimately, what I want to do is be able to route all of the tracks in my session to this print bus so that anything that I'm hearing is now flowing through this print track and I'm going to record the outputs of everything in my session to this print bus. So um, let's do it from this mix window. 
I'm just going to select all the tracks that are to be routed. And then let's just change this print track into, um, you know, a different color to make it stand out. So I got all those tracks selected. Um, I'm just going to go to each one or use the do to selected function to change them all at the same time, which is shift and option on a Mac. Click on the output path selector. I can go down the track or choose the bus path and choose to route all of these out to the print bus. And what you'll notice is that each one of these tracks now, their final destination is the print bus, which is running through to this audio track. Now, if I hit play, I'm not going to hear anything, right? But what I want to do is now record and enable this track and then start to record my session. So once I hit record, if you notice, everything is now recording through to my print track. I'm printing my mix down. And then back when I was telling you, all, like, if I make a mistake, I could say, hey, you know what? This is too loud at that point. Let's turn that down. And then I could start to print again from that section. And once I'm done, ultimately, select these two tracks, hold shift option and three and consolidate. Or you can go up to edit and choose to consolidate clip once you have those selected. But you're probably not going to make any mistakes um, during the print if you do this way. All right, cool. So after you've recorded down, again, the important thing is to make sure you route all of the tracks, including your effects tracks, to a bus. Have that bus come as the input to an audio track, a stereo audio track, record enable that audio track and then hit record and then you will have this print so if i solo this out this should be my whole mix here if the waveforms are super small right none of this other stuff is playing just the muted in so you know if the waveforms are super right. so the whole mix has now been printed down to this stereo audio file that i can now take and export and be done with it so if i wanted to rename this let's say uh, gain staging uh, proof two, right? I name it, and instead of um, bouncing this or exporting it out, basically you can with that clip selected, you come over to your clips list, right click on the file that you just created by printing, and you go and hit export clips as files. When you do that, you choose the same formula, but no additional processing is going to happen. I'm gonna keep all everything the same as i just recorded it sample rate bit depth wave file i'm keeping all that the same i'm going to choose where i want to save this and ultimately i'm just going to go right back to that same folder my bounce files folder and then hit export is there and now if i go over to my finder we will see that my gain stage improved two is right here good strong signal level if the wave and it's my whole entire mix just printed down all right so that is how you print in pro tools it's actually really simple and you know if especially if you are using um external gear during your mix hardware processors during your mix that could be a really um a really good way to make sure that you're exporting everything appropriately i'm wavy wayne from wavywayne.com if you got any questions Drop down in the comments and let me know. Otherwise, I'll catch y'all on the next video. Make sure you share this with somebody that you think could benefit and hit that subscribe. Be dope.